So before I get into the subject of this video, I thought I'd do the vloggy thing and talk about off-grid, since that's what the channel is. So as you can see, the weathermen nailed it today when they said mostly cloudy. <laughs> I do try to, my best to figure out what I'm going to do based on the weather, because obviously a lot that I do around here is dependent on the weather. So if I'm not making electricity from this big ball in the sky, then I have to do some alternative stuff. Well, this morning I got up, I thought, you know, that today would be a good day to fill the IBC tank, since it's gonna be cloudy all day, with the generator. Now I have a 2500 watt, I'm gonna show you all this in a minute, so stick with me. Dual fuel, propane, gasoline, inverter generator that I never get to run. Every now and then I want to run it to kind of make sure everything was working properly on it. And now that I know how to start it up well on propane, which I'm going to talk about more in a minute, I, I kind of enjoy running it. Used to be it was hard to start until I learned how to do it. And I hated the thing, but now I, I like running it, but I never run it. And specifically because we found this really cheap generator now it's it's not the greatest generator in the world it runs well starts on the first pull if the temperatures are above freezing i guess every time never have a problem with it it just doesn't produce a lot of electricity it's 1500 watts it's an inverter generator now you can buy these power smarts regular generator or inverter generator there is a difference and these are a little bit quieter than the regular generators, industrial strength generators. But for some reason, I, I don't feel like this one really powers 1500 watts. Now 1500 watts is peak, which means when you start something like a motor, you have this peak of energy, and then it comes back down to, to running watts. I don't know what the running watts on this is, is my problem. It won't run the freezer, for example. My inverter does, my inverter is 1000 watts. So you would think a 1500 watt generator would run a re freezer that a 1000 watt inverter will run. The inverter's 500 watts lower, but it, it doesn't, which is no big deal. That's not what I bought it for. What I bought it for was to run battery chargers, and it does that very well, and it, does, it just sips gas. So I bought this one, and I think it was like $300, pretty cheap. It's a little bit louder than what I'm accustomed to. It was, Inverter generators, the suitcase generators, are pretty quiet, which again, I'm going to talk about more in a minute. But this one's a little bit louder. I, you can definitely hear it running. As a matter of fact, today I ran that 2500 watt one, and when I got up to the house, I could barely hear it running. But this one, you can, you can hear fairly well. If you're playing a, a movie or something, it kind of fades away in the background, so you don't really hear it. But for the price, and as well as it runs, it's fantastic. So I've had it probably a year now I would say this month would would mark one full year and I run it all the time I run it I don't know through the winter I run it quite a bit because the days are shorter and I want to make sure that we got enough energy to get through the night I'm kind of particular about my batteries, so I usually run this every day for at least an hour throughout the winter I know some people are going to say, oh, I wouldn't run it, you know, I need to do something to fix it. There's nothing broke. It's just my own paranoia. I want to make sure that I don't damage the batteries. I'd rather spend 25 cents a day on gasoline, 50 cents a day on gasoline, whatever it is, than replace those batteries all the time. So that's my, my thinking. The generator itself, $300, and it's, it still pulls great. I changed oil. It was low on oil one time. Ran out of oil, not out, but... The low oil shut off, shut off the generator. But I haven't had that problem since. It makes it from oil change to oil change. What I do is about every five gallons of gas, I change oil. It's not quite 50 hours. I figure that's a good marker for me that when I run out of gas on one of these, I just change the oil. It doesn't hurt anything. It's easy to work on. It's, it's really a nice generator. So that means I don't have to run the bigger generator, which is much more expensive. So the bigger generator, like I said, is 2,500 watt inverter generator. And I've had it for a couple years, but I haven't ran it a lot. I bought it as a backup. 
I have a, or had, a generator that we had when we were nomads. It had 8,000 hours on it. So that one I bought at the tractor supply store. So you can see it's all disassembled. I use it for parts now. Uh, for example, the rope broke on this one, which, again, I'm going to talk about in a minute. I, I broke the rope because I was having problems starting it. Now that I figured that out, I don't think I have that problem. So I pulled, I pulled the rope off this one, put it on that one. I have a spare rope that I bought for this one now. But anyway, I use it for parts. This one ran great. This one's 2,000 watts. It's not dual fuel. It's just gasoline. And you can pick these up probably $400. Relatively cheap at the tractor supply, or you can go on Amazon and get them in yellow. I like the yellow better than the black. But I bought this one in an emergency. We were nomads, and I've actually had several generators, and two of them died. One because of the fire. We had a camper fire, and it burned up in the camper fire. The other one, I left gas in it for a couple days, weeks. I guess it was about two weeks. And when I start try to start it, the carburetor was was gone. Now I could have replaced the carburetor. As a matter of fact, this one has a brand new carburetor, and I just put it on. But that other one, we were still nomads, and getting parts quickly as nomads was hard to do. And we were at Texas at this time, and we could only stay at these campgrounds for about three days each. So I would have had to order it and had to find the address that we were going to and all that stuff. So it was just easier to go to Tractor Supply and pick this one up. So we picked that up again pretty cheap i would say i don't know maybe 3.99 i don't remember and they still sell them at least last time i checked they still sold them it did everything we needed charged the batteries it's quiet and it ran the well now it barely ran the well it really struggled and the older it got the more it didn't want to run it well then it just decided not to run it so i decided that we would take this one out of storage we bought this one I was still using that one to charge the battery, but it just wouldn't run the well. What I think happens is over time, the inverter itself, again, 8,000 hours, it's a tremendous amount of run hours. When you figure that an engine like that should only last maybe 1,000 hours, so eight times longer than what it was supposed to. We bought this one as a backup in case that one ever died, and it just sat in a box for the longest time, and finally we took it out when that one started having problems, and I was running the well off of it. Now, this was before... I got the solar panels to run the well. Now, I never run this one. It sits here. The last time I ran it was in January. And I don't even remember why I ran it in January. Probably because, if I had to guess, was I just wanted to run it to make sure it would start up and all that stuff. So I tried to run it every three or four months just to keep it loose. And I run it off propane. And what I do is I run on propane. I change oil every time I run out of propane. That's only 30 hours. You're supposed to change it every 50 hours, but it's just an easy way to remember when to change oil. I mean, oil is just not that expensive to, to be concerned about changing it too much. You can't change oil too much. So it just sits here. Now, this generator, I absolutely adore. I, I don't know. I, I really like it. It's better to me than that one. It, of course, it's dual fuel, so it runs off propane or gasoline. Now, when I I had a lot of problems with this, and especially in cold weather when it comes to propane. If you're going to try to start this in cold weather, like zero degrees or below, it's better just to warm everything up. Take it in the house, warm it up before you, you try to start it, because it, it just won't start. Propane does not like cold weather. It just, you lose pressure in the tank. I just watched a video on it today. For some strange reason, a propane video popped up. So I, I watched it and some expert was explaining all the science behind it. No, no, I'm not gonna try to repeat it. I'm not that smart. But it's hard to start in the winter. But when I first got it, it was just always hard to start. This rope would kick back on you every time. And you're trying to hold this down with your foot because it was hard to pull. It, on gasoline it does fine never had a problem with gasoline starts right up first pull but there is a process to starting this there, there's instructions you're supposed to take it over to choke when you're on propane there's a hose there's the hose that goes from the propane tank to the generator and so that plugs in right there 
and then you got to prime the hose so you got to put this on choke and you pull it five times to get that propane from the propane tank through the hose into the generator as i explained in a video not that long ago sometimes these tanks don't work there's all kinds of safety mechanisms in there and you can actually goof up that safety mechanism if you open this valve too fast and that kind of stuff and this thing just won't start then it's it just like your coma camp stove it's not going to light so you, you really got to figure out how to deal with it the best thing i have found is if you're going to use a propane tank once you get the thing running just leave the hose on the propane tank shut the valve that way you never lose that pressure in the hose the other thing i had to do was to get this hose to prime was put just a, a tad bit of gasoline in this and started on gasoline and as the it was running out of gasoline you, you start surging you plug in the hose from the propane tank and then it would switch over to propane and it would run correctly of course you want to make sure you run that gas out i run it on propane i don't run it on gas simply because of the carburetor issues with gasoline i don't run this very frequently so it's just better to run a propane because propane isn't going to harm the carburetor so what i learned on how to start this is after you run it and you shut it off you disconnect the hose you put this back on run and you pull that rope five times what happens is that propane gets stuck in the cylinder and as that cylinder starts to cool off it shrinks a little bit and you get compression lock and you can't pull the rope because that propane is still in there but if you pull it while it's hot you can feel it actually tries to start sometimes that propane will boom, try to make that pop when it's starting you pull it five times all that propane's out of the engine the next time you start it it's real easy but i really love this thing and i would love to run it more often I, I really do it's just it's it's so neat but the problem is is i i don't need it and really i will probably never need it i got that little generator runs fine the solar panels does 99 percent of the work around here it runs the the well now so i i don't need this anymore but i'm not going to get rid of it it's a great backup in case something happens that other generator doesn't want to start one morning you know whatever it's just a great thing to have so this brings me to preppers preppers are always stockpiling they want you to stockpile first of all they, they want you to be afraid which i'm going to talk a bit more in a second and you can tell that preppers seriously want something bad to happen as hdf stuff hits the van they want the world to come near to its extinction so they can play with their toys and I know how it feels. I used to be a prepper. And I always wanted to play with the stuff, but I wasn't allowed to. Why run the generator when you don't need to? So you're always hoping that the electric would go out so you can run your generator or hook up to the solar panels or whatever it was. What happens is, is they say, oh, well, you know, we maybe we should be buying a little extra food. So they buy a little extra food. And then they realize, huh, what if the freezer goes out? When the electric goes out, all the frozen meat's going to go bad on us. So what do they do? They buy a generator. And then the next thing is, is well, generators only run a couple weeks on five gallons of gas. What do we do after this? And they're constantly buying and buying and buying. So now they have all these toys. So they want something bad to happen so they can play with them. I know the feeling. I love this thing, but I, I never get to use it. So today I started it up. Woo! Yet the, the weatherman really messed me up. I could have waited on this a little bit longer, but regardless i do find it funny though when when there's nothing bad going on in the world you know preppers are always warning you about the, oh yeah the, the administration has just started world war three i remember the other maybe i don't know two or three months ago uh colorado decided they weren't going to put the republican candidate on the ballot the title is the other party just started world war three today and I haven't seen it. I guess it's still over in Colorado. I guess the fighting is taking place over there. I'm still waiting for it. World War III or Civil War or whatever he said. I'm like, well, it's not here. I guess we're immune here in the state of Missouri. So that's pretty cool. They're always trying to stir up fear. Well, then we had the eclipse. And then we had, we're supposed to have earthquakes. And we're all going to die. Well, today I wake up. I'm waiting for the next catastrophe. And they really didn't have anything. So, what did they do? 
the locusts are coming. That's right. The locusts are coming and it's going to kill us all. Now, I made a video about this a while back because I had a troll trying to scare me that Missouri was going to be the epicenter of the locusts. Well, not for me. I eat eggs, so my crops are fine. I'm not going to worry about a thing. The chickens are going to absolutely have a field day eating the locusts. And then the other thing was is I drove around today and gas prices went up 30 cents just within a few hours that I was driving. Well, that's because there was an eclipse and everybody was going to the gas station to get gas. And they run out of gas, so they raise the prices of the gas, so you won't buy it. So don't be afraid by all this. They just want to play with the toys, so they're literally praying to the YouTube gods that SHTF will happen. So if you'll click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was talking about the eclipse. So I hope I can inspire you. Don't be afraid. Just live your dreams. Thanks for watching.